on ramp jack. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 at 6 o'clock. First tonight, this weekend, Augusta will host one of the largest and fastest half Ironman races in North America. In this overview of the Savannah River in downtown, this is where it all begins. Right now, thousands of people are either on their way or already here in the Garden City to prepare for the triathlon that tests their swimming, biking, and running skills. But there are some big changes this year. Our Hallie Turner joins us live from the 5th Street Pedestrian Bridge. Hallie, what's new? So, as you can see right over here in Augusta, things are kind of transforming before our eyes. Let's pan a little bit this way, Emma. They've got tents, they've got fences setting up, setting up, and all of that. But this year, there are big changes. Athletes are preparing to hit the pavement running on a new course. It could be your first time or your 20th time, you're nervous. But once you get started, the nerves, they go really fast. Jeff Spires hasn't always been a runner. I started when I was about 47. He says fear became his motivator. The fear of what I used to be. I was about a two-pack-a-day smoker for about 30 years. It was in pretty rough shape. This year, he's hitting the pavement for his 12th half Ironman in Augusta. I'm looking to not be as impatient as I've been in the past. I start out too fast, and it really, really slows my run down in the later part. More than 2,000 athletes will swim, bike, and run a total of 70.3 miles, 13.1 of which organizers say will be a brand new course. We've done little changes, but I don't think we've done anything this drastic. Last year, runners faced an unexpected roadblock causing a time delay here at the railroad track they didn't train for. This year, for the first time in over a decade, the course is changing. The run course is totally new. That. Uh, it mainly goes on the river walk and still goes through all the spectator friendly areas in downtown. The cannon will sound at 7 a.m. starting with a 1.2 mile swim further up the river next to SRP Park in North Augusta, finishing under the 5th Street Bridge. Next is a 56 mile bike route that will take bikers down Gordon Highway. That stays the same this year and racers finish off with a 13.1 mile run. I run the course and I love it. it it's got a lot more turf but it don't slow you down. You can still it's, it, it flows. Uh, the bike course, uh, you got a few rollers, a few sh short hills on the first maybe 15 miles, but after that, no, it's it, it, nothing to worry about. Now, organizers say most of Broad Street will be shut down. Reynolds Street will still be open, but there will be runners crossing over, so it's important to watch out for delays in traffic. Good advice there, Hallie. And so many people come to Augusta for this. They can expect some cool morning temperatures through Sunday, and that cold swim is going to be wetsuit weather. Right. They, what, do you know what the temperature is where they allow them to wear wetsuits, Riley? Is it like... I, I, I know it comes up every single year. We're always kind of close to that threshold. I think it has to do more with the water temperature than the air temperature, and that's the thing. We really don't have a lot of sensors on the Savannah River to give us a good water temperature reading, so it's probably going to be a day-up thing they have to decide on but as far as air temperatures go right around 7 a.m gonna be close to 60 degrees so it is about 10 minutes georgia is one of 10 states with some of the highest incarceration rates the georgia justice project says our rate is 46 percent higher than some other national rates and one in 18 people are either in jail prison or on probation nationally more than 4 million people have a criminal record on file in georgia now a second chance program aims to help clear the paths for some of those former offenders. Audrey Dick Herber live in the newsroom with a look at how the Georgia Justice Project is looking to help. Right, it's called Second Chance Dusk. It is only active in a few other locations in Georgia and the Augusta, it is at the Augusta Richmond Library. If you have a record, you may be able to get it erased or sealed. Having a record comes with limitations. Preventing you from getting certain jobs. It can also prevent from certain funding, um, school loans, um, housing. So it's a lot of things that it can be affected in. Making it hard to do certain life necessities. There are so many people who need jobs right now. There are so many people who are trying to get their life back on track. Um, there are so many people who've made um, bad judgments or bad mistakes years ago. And, um, and that's not who they are now. But yet this one thing to keep popping up and keep you know, preventing them from doing certain things. For people trying to change their future, it's possible. The job skills program helps people get back on their feet, regardless of their background. They need to know that their past doesn't define them. 
Okay. Um, as a, a, a young uh, person, I got in trouble when I was young. And again, um, I had a lot of negative factors in my life where there was like, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. So when I had to have people that, that, that supported me and say, well, you know, you can. He says programs like these are very important in our community. We are making sure that people understand that, you know, again, there are people out there that genuinely care for you and they genuinely want to see you succeed. Helping create better lives so they can also make a difference. If we have people who are working, we have people who have housing, if we have people who um, have funding for various things, especially for school, um, they are less likely to be involved in the system. They are more likely to be productive citizens, and so anything that we can do to help keep them on that right path, that's a win-win for the community. All meetings will be at the Augusta Richmond County Library every Wednesday by appointment only. Appointments start October 4th, and information for both programs will be linked online and on our website. Sounds like a program that's working. Audrey, thanks for that. Back in 2021, Georgia lawmakers passed the Georgia Second Chance Act, helping local programs like these. Hope it changes quite a few lives. Over a year ago, the issue of lingering plutonium at SRS resulted in a big payout for Aiken County, about $168 million worth. That money is being split dozens of ways to go towards a new career development center, downtown redevelopments, and much more. And today, Aiken leaders are giving us a status update about the projects being funded by that deal. Our Taylor Martin explains where else the money is going. With more than $168 million to spend in plutonium settlement money, they're looking ahead to what the future holds. Cars buzzing by, families walking the streets, they're all signs of growth in Aiken County. We continually see that growth. Given the presentation that they're going to see, it multiplying, I think, and that's a good thing. With nearly $170 million being split up into multiple areas of the community, including $25 million for downtown Aiken, $6 million for infrastructure, $30 million for the Aiken County Public School District, Career and Tech Center, and much more, leaders say these are steps in the right direction. And these are things that we will see that will really make the quality of life better in our community and in our county for the, for the next uh, years to come. The money is also funding health advancements in the county, with $6 million going toward the new Clyburn Center for Maternal and Child Health at Rural Health Services, opening in December of this year. And $11.5 million is going toward a new nursing education center at Aiken Technical College, breaking ground in January of 2025. There's a big need in our region for nurses. Nathaniel Dix, who's lived in Aiken County his whole life, hopes the growth not only attracts people here, but makes them stay, too. We desperately need to keep our younger, bright, intelligent students who get out of school and not come back here to to remain, to remain here, or to be wanting to come back and stay here and take part of the growth that's here. Reporting in Aiken County, Taylor Martin on your side. And we'll have a complete list and a breakdown of where all of those funds are going on our website, wrdw.com. We have breaking news just into the newsroom. Investigators say missing teen Brody Shannon has been found. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Office says he's safe. He was found in Elbert County, and right now he is on the way back home. Well, after years of struggling with water quality, Bamberg County will get $600,000 in federal money to make improvements to the Bamberg County Airport water tank. Back in 2018, the I-Team looked into water issues there in Denmark. Our investigation found a history of consistent orders or consent orders against Denmark for water violations. A professor known for uncovering the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, spent that year testing the water and found high levels of lead in some homes. After that, DHEC came in to test and found the levels to be safe. During the pandemic, our IT team also uncovered a controversy Denmark was facing for shutting off water for dozens of families. Some of the families were struggling to pay the bills because of unemployment issues caused by the pandemic. This caused two South Carolina lawmakers to step up and ask the mayor to reconnect to the water service. So hopefully today this grant money will make a significant change. Along with helping the people of Denmark, the improvements to that water tank will boost water pressure for those firefighters. One drunk driver changed one woman's life forever. We share her inspiring story of recovery next on News 12 at 6 o'clock. And all eyes are on potential tropical cyclone 16. We'll take a look at what this storm could bring us coming up in that full forecast. Time and temp.
brought to you. So not a bad outlook there for those athletes Sunday morning. Here's a look at our full Sunday forecast. We got temperatures staying in the 80s early next week, but some rain possible again by next Tuesday. Tonight, a bird survivor sharing her life-changing story. A little over a year ago, Sarah Italian was looking forward to her first semester of college. All that changed one night after a drunk driver slammed into her car in a fiery crash. As Will Rio shows us, through the pain and scars, she continues to inspire others. Sarah Italian went to college, looking to move on to the next chapter of her life at Albany State University. I was a freshman taking psychology. In her second semester there, her whole life changed in the blink of an eye. Inside that car, engulfed in flames, was Sarah and her friend. So a drunk driver hit me and my friend from behind, and that had caused the car to caught on fire. 49% of my body was burned, and all 10 of my fingers were amputated. Sarah was the lucky one. Her friend passed away in the accident. Like, I remember people screaming, and I was crying for my mom, and because the door was burnt shut, and I was stuck in my seatbelt, they had to pull me out from the back seat. So I remember my whole body was burning and stuff, and I started walking a bit, and I was asking where my friend was, and then I passed out, and then I woke up in the hospital. Sarah would spend the next seven months fighting for her life in the hospital. I couldn't walk, talk, eat, and I was also in an induced coma, and then I went to rehab, and then I was there for another four months, so I was hospitalized for seven months, and I've had over 25 surgeries. Through all of the challenges, her message is still to put one foot in front of the other. Everyone should be encouraged to just keep moving forward and know that not every day is going to be rainbow and sunshine. You're going to have your days, but you just need to push through. And it just reminds me how you could be here one day and the next you could be gone. So just to cherish what you have around you and appreciate the little things. In Augusta, Will Rio on your side. And what a powerful reminder about drunk driving as well. But Sarah says she's still going through therapy three times a week as she looks to go back to school. Just an incredible outlook to go through something so hard. And her goal is to get in touch with other burn survivors to help them push through and to get back to a normal life. We know she's going to have a powerful testimony for a lot of this. We people. wish her well and thank her for sharing her story. The Greenbrier girls golf team winning their first state title in program history this year. Next in sports, the Wolfpack's head coach talks about the impact winning it all could have in that community. First alert radar, powered by Jim Hudson Lexus Acura Cadillac. Touchdown! <laughs> On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. In the spring, the Greenbrier girls golf team won their first state championship in program history. They also obliterated the competition, winning by 10 strokes to bring home the trophy. Two members of the Wolfpack cracked the top 10 individually, with Addison Lukic coming in fourth and Reagan Henderson finishing in eighth. Greenbrier received their state championship rings a couple of weeks ago in front of everyone in attendance at one of their halftime ceremonies during their football game. News 12's Nick Proto and I caught up with head coach Casey Heckathorn discussing their state championship run, the impact winning state could have on girls golf in their community moving forward, and everything in between. It's been kind of cool to feel the buzz of the community because drive, chip, and putt was soon after that. And there were little girls in the community who hadn't done that before who were, who were asking me for clubs. They were like, you know, do any of these girls want to kind of mentor and help? So even beyond Greenbrier, if there's growth in this sport, and I'm a father of three girls, so if there's growth in, you know, women's sport in the community, um, that's huge too. This was a great conversation, and you can watch our full 30-minute interview with Coach Heckathorn on WRDW.com. The votes are in, and you decided the showdown between the North Augusta Yellow Jackets and the Strom Thurmond Rebels will be the Under the Lights game of the week. Our Under the Lights coverage begins tomorrow at 530 and will be live from North Augusta throughout the night. All right, looking forward to it, Dan. Thank you. Happening now, if you live in Aiken, developers want to hear your opinion about a new project coming to the area. The building on Chesterfield, Newberry, and Lawrence Street will be considered a mixed-use facility. It could be used as both office and event space. Developers say you can look at the project on their website. You can submit feedback on the project. 
which is on our website, WRDW.com. The discussion tonight ends at 8 o'clock at the Center for African American History, Art, and Culture on York Street if you want to go in person. Just a heads up tonight, uh, another ra rabid raccoon found in McDuffie County, one of several in the area this year. The raccoon found on Saturday near Bowden's Pond Road, and a dog had to be put down after being exposed to it. Other rabid raccoons have been found in Columbia County, Richmond County, and Saluda counties over the last few months. You know, back in June, we met the Dickert family. Baby Cooper spent the first year of his life in the children's hospital. Cooper has a very rare condition that means he needs around-the-clock care at home. Today, his family giving back to the place where they spent so much time. They donated 70 teddy bears and 14 blankets to patients in the NICU and the PICU at our Children's Hospital of Georgia. And Baby Cooper, who has grown a lot since leaving, also made an appearance taking photos with all of his nurses and staff. They told us they just wanted to give this gift to families walking a similar path to the one they walked more than a year ago. You're watching News 12 on your side. Every day is... We've got a lot of news coming up. The looming threat of a government shutdown. The details tonight about the infighting in Congress over spending bills and why some Americans are worried they'll soon have to work without pay. That's tonight on the CBS Evening News. All right, well, we are going to see beautiful weather here locally this weekend. If you're maybe traveling to see some of these games on Saturday, we do have the dogs in town this weekend. Also, a big game in Death Valley, a noon kickoff against Florida State up in Clemson. And then uh, at williams Bryce, a good game. South Carolina taking on Mississippi State. And the only team that's away this weekend uh, from our local SEC and SEC schools is that uh, Georgia Tech's playing up at Wake Forest. So that's actually a live camera view over Wake Forest's stadium. They could see a few showers there for that game, but all these other games should stay nice and dry and comfortable temperatures, most likely in the 70s around kickoff. For us here locally, we are going to see a breezy Friday. Temperatures a little bit cooler heading into our weekend forecast, waking up in the upper 50s Saturday, Sunday, and Saturday, the official first day of fall, and luckily going to feel like it this year for us. Next week is when our rain chances finally do increase some. Tuesday, Wednesday next week, possibly a few showers. Other than that, looking to stay dry for any weekend plans. Riley, thanks. Our next live update comes at 7 o'clock over on NBC 26. Then we're back with Morning's 12 tonight at 11. We'll see you then.